the Blues Brothers mood review. Meet the Blues Brothers. Brothers in music genre only. Jake and Elwood. Jake just got out of prison and he and Elwood are a bit of small time hustler when not touring with the blues band. Their old orphanage is possibly getting shut down. They need $5,000 of tax money within 11 days or there will be no place for the orphans. Obviously they can't let this happen so they decide to put the band back together and try to raise the 5000 legally because someone really doesn't want them to do it illegally and once you get to know her you will understand why they want to do as she says. Of course along the way they do get into trouble with the police. A country western band and some local Nazis. This is a cult classic. There's a bit of backstory to it about Dan Aykroyd wanting to bring back blues music. It's somewhat interesting but I'm not really going to go into that here. What I want to focus on is just what a well put together and incredibly effective movie this is. It just, it ages really well. I have seen this movie more times than I can count and I continue to be endlessly entertained by it. This movie is a tribute, a salute, as well as a bit of... It's a tribute to various music genres and the people who enjoy those music genres, such as gospel music, country western, and it definitely is also a tribute to blues. However, it does also poke some fun at country western and gospel music, but without, you know, I would really say, if you go into this movie not liking one or more of those two genres, or if you go into it liking both of them, in either case, you'll like the film. You won't find it, excuse me, too, too much, you know. It is, in part, a musical. And I realize I just lost half the audience right there. But if you actually enjoy this music, not only are you not going to be bothered by that fact, you're actually going to seriously enjoy it. John Landis, who directed this, can really get the energy of a piece of music or just a situation. He really captures that and brings it forth from the way he shoots it and edits it. And just and the music choices are just phenomenal. You never tire of this music. I, I can only speak for myself, of course, but I've watched this countless times the first time since I was maybe seven or eight, so we're talking over um, almost two decades, you know, getting to be two decades. I am not tired of this movie yet. And just, and the use of music is just, it, it always fits, and it always really adds to the, to the mood, and just the, you know, the, the dancing and the cutting you know, the energy is really there, you know, it's, it, some people are going to get right up out of their seat and dance and sing along. Myself possibly included. The acting is quite good with some exceptions. Obviously the Blues Brothers themselves really have to be, you know, enjoyable to watch because they are the main stars here other than the music, and, you know, John Belushi as Jake is just this, you know, they're, they're both kind of nasty and dirty and really in that kind of lower class kind of 
a little bit scummy, but not, like, disgusting, you know. Yeah, I'll get more into that, but Jake is very kind of surly, and Elwood is maybe a bit more optimistic, and he's also a complete motorhead. The, one of the very first scenes has him describe in great detail the car that he, you know, uses to pick up Jake from the prison. Start, of course, by Jake pointing out that he's getting picked up in a police car. The two of them maintain this pure level of just coolness throughout the movie. They hardly ever react to what is happening to them. They don't seem phased by what's going on around them. And do note that one of the things going on around them is some woman is trying to kill them. She shows up in the first 20 minutes or so and just empties a, I don't know, four-barrel rocket launcher at the building they're standing in front of. This is not a spoiler. Again, 20 minutes into the movie. They get up, dust themselves off, and get on with the, you know, what they were doing. And that that's... That's how they are the entire movie, you know, so really, if that appeals to you, yeah, the movie is for you. And if you're uh, thinking, you know, that that's stupid or that's not for you, the movie is not for you. It is not for everyone. It is very large in some places. It makes huge productions out of, it. for example, the music, but also these car chases that are also just one of the most enjoyable parts of the movie. These massive car chases, well choreographed, as choreographed as the dancing sequences, really. And just the number of car crashes and the creative ways in which they crash, just really astonishing. And, you know, do note that this was before that kind of thing was done in any kind of fake way. You know, these are actual stock drivers. These are cars getting smashed. This is, none of this is, you know, really faked, technically. You know, it's done safely, but it's actually done. It's physically there. Perhaps this is a good time to get into, there is really no violence and nearly no cruelty or, you know, ill will towards anyone. It's, there, there are some guns, but... You know, nothing is ever, nothing really feels like, you know, something is going to go horribly wrong kind of thing. You know, it is very much, you know, I mean, I watched it as a child. There was nothing in it that really, you know, disturbed me. And watching it today, I can see why. It, there, there really is nothing where, it, you know, even in some children's movies, there's, like, hatred toward, hatred towards someone or some group or something. But in this, not really, you know. Some of the characters are kind of fun, interesting, you know, you memorable ones. Several of, you know, you, with this movie, you gotta go into the cast. Many of them are actually music stars. You know, some of them are dead today, so I, I, I love that this was actually, you know, and so is John Belushi, you know, rest in peace, all of you, you know, you did fantastic work, not only on this movie, but in general. And, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna start name dropping. We've got James Brown as a Southern Baptist preacher. You know, we've got Ray Charles as a music salesman who just wants to show off that his equipment, the, the musical instruments he's selling. Yeah, I just referred to a black guy's equipment. I'm very, very sorry. The musical instruments that he's selling, there's nothing wrong with. We've got Aretha Franklin as a feminist. 
that's your that's really all you need to know. You don't need to know exactly what else she is in the movie. That's just that's the core, really. And she actually does fantastic acting. I she really must have challenged ch channeled the kind of musical persona that she had. You know, Cap Calloway sings what I understand was one of his hits, uh, Minnie the Moocher. You know, and just in general. And the band itself, the Blues Brothers Band, are actually, you know, a band uh, and a blues band. And that does, of course, mean that some of them really aren't... Okay, let's say all of them. Essentially, all of them are not good actors, but it's tolerable enough. And they're not asked to... They're, they're not in it that much. They don't have that much dialogue. The dialogue is another... There are some really great lines in this, and some of it is just the delivery, you know, we've got some really deadpan delivery, such as by the Blues Brothers, and, you know, just these great types. The movie does make fun of the police, and just in general, this, the authoritative kind of forces of the United States, you know, and how they might react if things don't completely go their way. But again, it doesn't really feel malicious. And it's just an awful lot of fun. The pacing is fantastic. You know, the, I don't know, Director's Cut Extended Edition is about 2 hours and 15 minutes, and then the credits roll. And the credits are kind of, I don't know, 7 minutes long, maybe. But there's music through them, so there's reason to watch those as well. The regular version is around two hours. Again, I can only, you know, if, if you get into it, if you like the movie, they're just gonna fly by. You're not gonna notice any time passing, really. The movie really captures the environments that it explores. You know, again, we've got the gospel, we've got the country western, we've got this kind of inner city stuff, you know, there's more, but I don't want to give any more away. It's just, you can really tell they're there, and the people who made this understand. They they realize what it's like being there. You know, they might not all live in such a place themselves, but they get what it's like. They can communicate what it's like. And I actually also would say the acting tends to be so strong, and the film, the cinematic communication is so strong that I would wager that a lot of this movie would be understood without dialogue, actually. You know, just the the looks on people's faces and the way it's cut and everything. And just another thing it somewhat makes fun of is religion. And all in all, I wouldn't say that it's malicious, you know, it is not an atheist film. It just, it has some fun with it. It it creates some scenes that seem really, you know, big. And, you know, some of that, I don't know, some people are going to find that disrespectful to religion. Some are, you know, going to see it as maybe partially a tribute to it. You know, either way. I, again, it's not really, it's not trying to convert anyone either way. It's not trying to dissuade or encourage faith, I would say, overall. It's a movie you can really get behind. You know, it's, it's two guys, they might not be the most honest people in the world, but they're trying to save an orphanage. You know, they're trying to help children. And, you know, they're, they're just... You know, you, you can really sympathize with them and their situation, even though, you know, and it's never really, they're not made out to be, like, just perfect people or heroes, really, you know. I suppose that's more or less what there is to say about the movie. Yeah, just... A really good time if it appeals to you, you know, and just if you like the music, at the very least, you know, at the very least, listen to the music. You don't have to watch the movie for that, but yeah, just 
great music, great cast, great characters. And we also have, what's his name, John Candy. Again, rest in peace. I believe he's dead. Anyway, very small role, but just a ton of fun. And he does, and he really seems to be enjoying himself as well. And just, you know... Kind of fun. It, you know, the, the plot is kind of simplistic and you know, very easy to follow, but at the same time, it is kind of an adventure for them to, you know, at, at the very first, at, at the very start, we just have this, you know, they have the end goal. They know what they're supposed to do. They know what they should end up with. They should end up with 5,000 honestly earned money dollars before 11 days pass so that they can save the orphanage. At first they don't even know what they're going to do. Then they get the idea, I'm not going to tell you how, that's too good for me to spoil. They get the idea to put the band back together, then they have to find the band, they have to get new instruments, and then they have to get a gig, you know, a really well-paying gig. And you can really tell it it's you know, every step of the way feels like a big deal, you know, you, you really get behind it, you really want them to succeed. But yeah, just watch the movie. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.